Diabetes mellitus has become prevalent worldwide in the past few years, especially in China, which reports the highest number of adults with diabetes. Type 2 diabetes mellitus, or T2DM, accounts for approximately 90% of all diabetes cases, with patients often needing insulin injections for glycemic control. Despite this, however, a large number of Chinese patients with T2DM are unable to attain target glycemic levels, i.e. A1C of less than 7.0%. This is the case even after initiating insulin therapy for six months. To this end, researchers in China decided to look into combination therapy as a possible solution. They focused on linagliptin, a type of dipeptidyl peptidase 4 DPP-4 inhibitor, which lowers blood glucose levels by stimulating insulin and inhibiting glucagon production in a glucose-dependent manner. Unlike other DPP-4 inhibitors, linagliptin is primarily excreted through the non-renal route and does not need dose adjustment even in patients with renal impairment. DPP-4 inhibitors have complementary mechanism of action with insulin therapy. When taken with basal insulin, linagliptin has been shown to control glycemic levels in patients with inadequately controlled T2DM. Premixed and basal insulin are both commonly used for diabetes treatment in China. However, clinical data on the use of linagliptin with premixed insulin are limited for the local population. To this end, the researchers conducted a 24-week Phase 3 trial to evaluate the efficacy and safety of linagliptin as an add-on therapy for Chinese T2DM patients. They recruited 206 Chinese patients with uncontrolled T2DM, receiving insulin with or without metformin. This study included patients receiving either basal or premixed insulin, which is reflective of real-world clinical practice in China. The patients were randomized in a 1 to 1 ratio to receive either linagliptin, 5 mg per day, or placebo. In the linagliptin group, the researchers observed significant reductions in glycated hemoglobin, HbA1c, after 24 weeks of treatment than in the placebo group, which was seen as early as week 4 and was maintained up to week 24 of the study. This HbA1c reduction was consistent across subgroups of patients with different baseline characteristics, including age, baseline glycemic level, gender, type of insulin received, duration of diabetes, and baseline renal function. The researchers also observed a significant reduction in 2-hour postprandial glucose from baseline compared with placebo. Proportionally more patients on linagliptin achieved greater than or equal to 0.5% reduction in HbA1c versus placebo. The safety outcomes for both treatment groups were similar, with no new safety findings. It is known that linagliptin does not increase the risk of hypoglycemia through its glucose-dependent action. But when using it with hypoglycemic agents such as insulin, there is a potential risk of hypoglycemia. Therefore, the combination might require some dose adjustment of insulin. Thus, regardless of whether patients with T2DM were initially on basal or premixed insulin, linagliptin as an add-on to insulin can improve glycemic control and is well tolerated, with no increased risk for hypoglycemia or weight gain. These findings corroborate previous international studies and support the use of linagliptin add-on to insulin as an effective, well-tolerated treatment option for Chinese patients with T2DM.